The last repeat national champion, Florida, 06-07. Baylor going to look to do that. The reigning national champs start their journey, their road to the Final Four against Norfolk State. That game will be played in Fort Worth, Texas. North Carolina Marquette, the bottom of their pod there. St. Mary's going to play the winner of Wyoming and Indiana. UCLA taking on Akron. 6-11 game, Texas and Virginia Tech. The Hokies winning the ACC tournament four games in four days. Purdue and Yale, Murray State and San Francisco. Oh boy, it's going to be a good game. And then if Murray State advances an all-Kentucky matchup, that is if the Cats get by the Peacocks in the first round, this is certainly a tasty region in the East. All right, back here with Tim Doyle, Matt Norlando. Let's welcome in the Wizard of Odds, Kenny White. Look at Kenny in a tie. He looks sharp. He looks really, really nice. All right, let's start here with Baylor. 116 taking on Norfolk State out of the MEAC. That game's going to be played in Fort Worth, Texas. Matt, I just need a winner. You're, 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 putting, you're putting Baylor on, right? There's no question here. This, they're moving on. Guys, it's all for you. Baylor's going to win this game easily. There's no UMBC Virginia situation. That will not happen. Okay. Tim, are you laying 20 and a half with Baylor? I, I would not. I, I would take Norfolk State in this game. They've had an outstanding year. They're the best team in their conference. And if you look at Baylor's roster right now, they're playing six guys. And LJ Cryer is supposed to come back at some point. Their bugaboo is three-point shooting. He's their best three-point shooter. My point is, if you're Scott Drew, you know what you're not going to do? Run your starters out there, and if you're up by 14, you're not going to push it to 27. Like, I'm getting a lot of points in this game. I'm going to take the dog. All right, so Baylor on to the next round, Kenny. What are you going to play in this game? You play the total, or you're going to pick a side here? I like the side. I agree with Tim. I, I think that uh, they're shorthanded with losing JTT for the year and uh, uh, LJ Cryer not being back back for such a long time. He's, he's probably not going to be in game shape, too, if he does come back in this game, obviously, but it'll be a good workout for him. Uh, but I like the way Norfolk State has played. Uh, they've, they've played great down the stretch. Uh, they haven't played anybody all year, but, you know, these types of teams are dangerous uh, against a team like Baylor because I don't think Baylor was deserving of a one seed. And they're going to be feeling really comfortable about themselves right now. Knowing they're a number one, I think they kind of feel it's a given. I think Norfolk State will give them a battle. So I'm taking the points. All right, so Tim and Kenny on Norfolk State getting 20 and a half against Baylor in the first round. All right, the 8-9 matchup takes us to North Carolina and Marquette. Uh, this is a tough game to pick, Matt. Who's marching on in your bracket? <sighs> I got to go North Carolina here. And my biggest reason why, guys, is that the Tar Heels have – performed well consistently throughout the season. They've had issues with good teams. I saw this team in person do what it did at Duke. Armando Bacos been one of the best bigs in the country this season. This is a bit of a toss-up. Shaka Smart's done really well. Justin Lewis is a guy you're going to want to watch from Marquette. The Golden Eagles can get it done here, no doubt about it. And Shaka, personally, he's going to want some redemption after last year. Remember, Texas, three seed, lost to Abilene Christian. But I'm going to take Hubert Davis. Traditionally, last year was an aberration. UNC actually lost against Wisconsin in the first round. But North Carolina, historically, almost never loses first-round games. I'll, I'll pick the pattern to stick here. Give me uh, Brady Manick playing well, and I'll take North Carolina to win this one. North Carolina coming off the loss to Virginia Tech, who ran the table in the ACC. you got to lay two and a half with the Tar Heels against the Fighting Shock of Smarts. Tolls 150 to hook. What stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, in North Carolina, they need to get outstanding guard play between Love and Davis. They got that in their win at Duke, but... How big of egg did they lay when they went up against a Virginia Tech squad and they were awful in that game and they couldn't score and that's been their bugaboo all year. Marquette beat Villanova twice. They beat Providence by 40 and then they went to Providence, almost won that game. I agree with Matt. I think Justin Lewis is an NBA starter at some point in the next 10 to 12 years of his career and I just don't trust North Carolina. I like Marquette here on the money line. I think the numbers numbers about right. Uh, two very good teams. I can't wait to watch this game because I'm going to bet it over, over the total. Uh, up tempo. Both these teams play extremely fast. You know, Shaka Smart loves to pressure, but his team offensively has been one of the fastest teams all year. They they get to the basket. They get in the paint. And North Carolina is going to be able to do the same thing. So over 150, going to be a fun game. Watch a lot of firepower here. All right, skip down to the 413 matchup that features UCLA and Akron. That game being played in Portland. So certainly the Bruins will be able to travel well there, uh, not too far away. Of course, you know, you got to get on a plane, but so will the Zips. And Tim's ready to hammer something, and I, I have a pretty good feeling what he's going to hammer. But I want to start with you, Matt, because this UCLA team, 
first four, uh, playing in the first four to the final four. And look, could have won a national championship. Here they are against a, a feisty Akron team. Akron Spicy, coached by John Gross, who has taken uh, Illinois and Ohio once upon a time. He took Ohio to the Sweet 16 uh, a decade ago, but this is going to be all UCLA. UCLA is not fully healthy, oh, by the way, but it's, it's looked really, really good and it gave a great game to Arizona. Uh, Bruins are, are well suited on the four line here. So Akron was not the best team in the MAC. Uh, Gross is a good player, a uh, good coach, excuse me. Akron's got a couple of good players, but this is. I would be surprised if this is actually a tight game with a few minutes ago. What are you hammering? Oh, a game like this comes around once in a generation. Once in okay. a generation. No doubt about it, because people are going to go see, and they see UCLA, they go, ah, oh, oh, I, know, I know these guys. I know Jaquez. I know Johnny Juzek. I recognize these names. But there's only one person that is the voice of the MAC conference for CBS. You're looking at him. I've seen Akron. Akron has two NBA players. Ali Ali is a wing that could do multiple things on the floor. And Enrique Freeman, hashtag BBN, got corrected me. I said he was the best rebounder in college basketball. I apologize. We all know that who's the best rebounder. They found you, Oscar Sheboy. Yeah, so he's they found – you're right. He's not the best rebounder, but he's the second best rebounder. And John Gross found him in the lunchroom. He was at Akron as a student. He goes, hey, why don't you come play basketball? And the guy has been dominating. He is a rebounding machine. You are paying an absolute premium to bet UCLA. This game should be eight and a half, nine and a half. What are you going to lay here? 14. 14. Bet it now because this thing is going down. Bet I, I'm, I'm actually dumb. I'm betting it right now. I'm not even talking anymore. Kenny, I know that you will never lay a number this heavy. You'll never, you will not lay 14 with a team like UCLA. So what will you do in this one? I, I think Tim's exactly right. I love it. I only made the game 10, and, and I think this is a team that uh, – 10, UCL, 10. UC, 10, 10, that's it, 10. I took 15 on this. I still think 14 and a half is a good number. Uh, you're right about the players talking about uh, Ali and also um, Castaneda, the other guard. He's outstanding, too. This is like a very good, experienced basketball team that they just beat up Kent State. I know Kent State had one starter out in suspension first half. It didn't matter. Kent State tied the game up in the second half. And then all of a sudden, Akron just pulled away. This is a really good basketball team. Um, I think they'll give UCLA a bet. I don't think UCLA will be interested whatsoever in this game. Look, I'm from Kent, Ohio. So, of course, I'm a Kent State fan. Uh, and to be quite honest, I'd like to see Akron win this game. I just Whoa, to, win this game? Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I'd like to, I'd, point I point would point. like to see that. I would like to see an upset like that to represent for the Mid-American Conference. Because as you've always said, you fight for the little guys. UCLA has been there. I'm good. I don't need to see you. Last year, who got in from the MAC? Ohio. Mm -hmm. Ask Virginia what happened in that game. Just saying, I, 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 even though Akron and Kent are rivals, I, I'm going to root for the MAC here. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's get down to our 11-6 uh, matchup here: Texas and Virginia Tech. Chris Beard, Mike Young. Um, look, I love both these coaches. I mean, they can coach their butts off, and that's why they're here. This is a great game. You can see the line, Matt. I mean, that just tells you how close this is. Who's going to march on in your bracket? I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to go with Virginia Tech in this one. I'm I'm sold on this team is so reliable in terms of how close knit they are. You know what I love about Virginia Tech, coached by Mike Young, and you've got some guys like Storm Murphy, Kevin Aluma, Hunter Couture, Hunter Couture who committed to Wofford. These are guys who were affiliated with Wofford. They've graduated up to the varsity, if you will. ACC champions. First time Virginia Tech ever won an ACC tournament. Just happened in the past 24 hours. Texas has been good. It's veteran team. But I've heard from a couple of coaches that really like Mike Young in this spot. He is an elite level coach. Virginia Tech's going to be, this is going to be a trendy pick because of what Virginia Tech just did. Texas has been, Texas has been off the radar. Yeah. They lost early in their conference tournament. Texas played poorly last year in the NCAA tournament. That will also affect public opinion perception. I'm actually interested to see Kenny's take on that. For me, I'm going to go with Virginia Tech in this spot. Elite shooting team playing as well as just about any team entering into this tournament. That doesn't guarantee a win, but this is a wonderful, wonderful matchup. And uh, I just got to go Virginia Tech here. But I, this is my favorite 6-11. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hammering Texas in this spot. I mean, what an easy pitch this is for Chris Beard. Right? He, he knows that all of a sudden he can motivate his team like, oh, you know that if we don't come to play, well, Virginia Tech just proved on a national stage when all eyes were on them that they could take out Duke. And another thing that's concerning for me with Virginia Tech and Mike Young, the crying. 
mean, how many guys were crying after they win a championship? The emotion that went in there. Wait, you're playing in Brooklyn. It's New York City. There's an energy there. You're playing Duke. It's the ACC Conference Tournament. We win. Everybody's crying. Everybody's weeping. Now we go to Milwaukee. Like, uh, it's almost like a drop-off. Like, the game against Duke was like a pinnacle, and now it's like, oh, Milwaukee, Texas. And it's going to be an angry Texas team, and they're going to be focused on defense because Virginia Tech has a bullseye. I love the Longhorns in this spot. Hammer Texas. <laughs> well, Virginia Tech was probably the one team that got the worst seeding of anybody in this tournament. I can't believe they're 11 seed. I'm, I, they're the 13th best team in the entire country. You love, you love and, Mike, and Mike Young. He does. He loves, he loves him. Yeah. I have him at 250 to 1 to win the NCAA tournament for 100. Hundred dollars. I just thought throw a hundred on that uh, to win twenty five thousand. I I think they could get to the uh, Sweet Sixteen. Um, they're the better basketball team. I, I made Virginia Tech three in this game, and Tim brings up a lot of good points. Well, I am a little bit worried. They won four games in four days, and they beat North Carolina and Duke to to finish it out. And guys were crying. Can they get up and show that same intensity? This team has been clawing its way back. They started zero and four in conference, then two and seven. And they worked their way back to finish at 11-9 in the conference. And again, they're 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 a top 20 team. Ken Palm's got them number 23, so I'm not far off. So I'm I have them 13th. He has them 23. Say they're the 18th best team in the country, and they got an 11 seed, worst seed. So maybe that disrespect will be enough to help Virginia Tech get by this game. There's nothing wrong with crying, by the way. No, it, it takes a lot out of you. I did a, it, I it, did some earlier this evening, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, bracket buster. But the emotion sometimes can be good because then you play to your best. You, you, you let it all out, then you, you get back up. Look, we all comp- – you, play, you played Division I. We, I didn't, we didn't play Division I college athletics. You played at the highest level. Emotion can be good as long as you rein it in. And a, and a coach like Mike Young, he's not going to let these guys just, you know, be crying all day long. It's not, this isn't a, a, a league of their own. There's no crying in baseball. The way I would handicap this, if this game was being played tonight, I would take Virginia Tech. But now you go back yeah. and Texas, or you give Chris Beard time to prepare – uh, we've seen how that story works out. And now what an easy motivation this is for your squad. Hey, guys, Virginia Tech's playing really hot. And this guy, Couture, can really shoot. we got to wipe him out. Like, yeah, th- th- this is a bad, bad situation. It's just uh, to start, stop, and start again emotionally. Come on. You guys are all in long-term relationships. It's hard to do. It is. You're right. Uh, marriage is hard work. <laughs> it's also really, really hard to pick a perfect bracket. It's extremely hard. Um, Purdue and Yale. I got Purdue marching on here against the Ivy League uh, winner. Uh, yeah, listen, Yale has a wonderful coach. James Jones has done a great job there. I mean, James uh, Yale went more than 50 years without making an NCAA tournament until all of six years ago, and now Yale has had an NCAA tournament-level team uh, for the past six seasons. But I understand Purdue is seen as a bit vulnerable because it's had defensive issues and some lapses there. Uh, and Yale has, has, has made noise. Remember when Yale beat Baylor? I just don't see this being that. I, I, think, I think this is... I think this is a dominant Purdue win. Now, James Jones, good coach, but I think Matt Painter's guys, they're going to be ready to go, and Purdue's first challenge might come, uh, you know, once we get to the weekend. But uh, the first game, I'm not seeing it. I think this is a roll job by Purdue. I think Purdue wins, but I'm going to take the dog here, which is horrible because then, like, wait, you're betting the team that you're picking to win the national championship. You hate to be in those situations. But uh, Azar Swain made a ton of big shots against the Princeton team. I thought their defense was really good. There's pedigree there. They're not going to be intimidated by the moment. I just think this is too many points. Can I'm going to take the dog. I'm in agreement. I'm on. I'm on the dog in this game. Uh, I don't know. You know, Purdue just played for the Big Big Ten championship game, and, and it was a, a very emotional game. I felt. Uh, James Jones, defense is number one. They're going to try to slow the pace down. Actually, they're going to pressure a little bit on defense. It's going to force them to go faster. But, yeah, we'll take their time with the basketball. Kind of try to frustrate them in this basketball game. So, I actually like under the total is my better play in this game, under 144. But I am on the dog as well. Bulldogs are the underdogs here. Uh, so, you're getting uh, a nice uh, nice amount of points here. 15 and a half against Purdue there in Milwaukee. All right, let's move now to Indianapolis, Murray State, and San Francisco. And Matt, another game where Vegas has a one-point spread because it could go either way, and this game is very intriguing. How do you see this one playing out? I think it can be an incredible game here. Uh, What we have are two top 27 teams in Ken Palm, 
Both of these teams are coached by really talented young coaches. Matt McMahon at Murray State, they got the best record in the country. Todd Golden's San Francisco Dons are dancing for the first time since 1998. San Francisco entered the season at Ken Palm as a top 35 team, and it only got better from there. No, San Francisco wasn't able to slay Gonzaga in conference or St. Mary's, but the metrics don't lie. This is a phenomenal matchup. This is the best first round matchup on the board period. I don't like how the committee, and I'm not saying it was intentional, but I don't like how the committee put these two mid-majors against each other. I would love for these teams to have the opportunity to play other big programs. But we get this, and what we get is an incredible matchup. And oh, by the way, with all this, I'll let you guys take the lines and stuff. I'll pick a game. Both of these coaches are in the mix for bigger jobs. I don't know if Golden will leave San Francisco. I don't know if McMahon will leave Murray State. I can just tell you both are going to eventually be power conference coaches. And the winner of this one, there are going to be plenty of vacancies at power conference levels. They'll be on it. I am this one. I'm going to take Murray State. Now, San Francisco rates better narrowly in the predictive metrics. I will go Murray State from start to finish. It's proven to be just a slightly better team. And there's two guys on this roster, KJ Williams, Tevin Brown. They played with John Morant. You know what that team did a few years ago? Upset Marquette in the first round of the NCAA tournament. They've got experience there. I'll ride with the Racers. Yeah, I mean, they're 30 and 2. Yeah, 20 uh, game win streak. They're 30 and 2 and doing remarkable things. I watched them against Belmont. I think we all have a high respect for the Belmont program. They play basketball the right way, they embarrassed them. I mean, there was no other way to say it. Not once, twice. They have the athletes, they have the size. Obviously, a guy like KJ Williams is not going to be intimidated by the moment. San Francisco was not intimidated by Gonzaga, and I thought they went toe-to-toe -to -toe and looked them in the eye. Problem was, it was Gonzaga, and they kind of took them out to the shed three different times. So uh, I'm going to go at Murray State here because I'm envisioning Murray State and Kentucky and the state of Kentucky going absolutely nuts for that matchup. Indeed, that would be if they move on and, and uh, face the winner of the Cats and the Peacocks. But before we get to that matchup, Kenny, uh, when you look at the total, is, is there a play that stands out to you here, or, or are you going to go ahead and pick a side? This is going to be, Matt was right, this is going to be a great game. This is probably the best first-round game of anybody in the country because you, you have two top 25 teams. And if San Francisco wasn't in the, in the West Coast Conference and they were in the Ohio Valley, they'd probably have the same record as Murray State, maybe even better. Maybe they only have one loss. Uh, they lost five games to Gonzaga and St. Mary's, who are both outstanding basketball teams. So I'm going under the total. I, I think it's going to be a great defensive game. San Francisco's D, uh, 19th in the country right now uh, in the Ken Palm ratings. And I think they're, they may be better than that. Uh, so this is going to be a great game right down to the wire. Close game because every possession means something in this basketball game. I went under 138 and a half. All right. So if Murray State advances, they would potentially play the winner here of Kentucky. Oh, come on. Potentially. They're playing Kentucky. Okay. You think that's happening? Matt? Well, just real quick, I'll take Kentucky. In this whole pod, this whole region, Shaheen Holloway, St. Peter's coach. He's another really talented up-and-coming coach. Uh, just want to note, but I'm, I'm going to go with Kentucky in this spot. But with that being said, there is no guarantee. Kentucky, and I love I – have, I have my rankings 1 to 68 on, the CV, on, the, on your CBS Sports app or CBSSports.com. I have a ranking of every team in this field 1 to 68. You know I have third in that overall ranking? The Kentucky Wildcats. They're definitely good enough to win in the national championship. It just so happens Kentucky has the hardest – potentially hardest second round matchup of any team on the one or the two line. So keep that in mind. But I've got guys, I've got Kentucky clearly moving on without too much of resistance here against St. Peters. I wouldn't lay 17 and a half. I'd probably take the dog if I had to come down to it. I hate taking a dog when I know they have 0.0, .0 chance of winning the game. But Shaheen Holloway is just like primed to get like a, a real job somewhere up and down the East Coast at the next level. St. Peter's is next to impossible to recruit anybody to play basketball there. Uh, Rick Patino's Iona team failed me, minus 650. I'm still angry about that loss or else I would have hit a 17 parlay that night. Kentucky rolls, but I just wonder what would that spread be if they played Murray in the next round? Ooh. Would Kentucky be four and a half? Kenny, what do you think? Yeah, I'm only going to have Kentucky like three. Wow. Over 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 San, over San Francisco. So I got San Francisco moving on, but three, three and a half over over Murray State. Yeah, that's that's it. That's going to be a great game. Uh, the East is the it, the East is the best bracket of all. I did the average ratings for each team in each bracket. The East came out at 112 and a half. Uh, the West a 111. Uh, the South was a 112, and the weakest was the Midwest. They came out 110 rating. On, on my rating system. This game, I, I already played the dog. I took St. Peter's plus 18. Uh, they're going to slow this game down to a crawl. They're going to play 
vicious defense. And I know Kentucky has way better athletes. But again, I just don't think it's a game that Kentucky's looking at. They're looking at, we're 17, we're moving on. Who do we play next? And I think they're going to be in for a surprise. The only problem with St. Peter's, they don't score a lot. So I went under as well. I went under the total of 134. I think it's going to be just an extremely low-scoring basketball game. Peacocks making their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2011. You know where Kentucky last won a national championship, Tim? In the city of New Orleans. Wow. Where, where are we going? Four? New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah. Perhaps some big blue nation wildcat magic. We may need IVs down there, me and you. We might. We might. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.